Hello everyone, I am Bill Harris and this is Life Questions. Thank you for joining us today and we are here with answers to your questions about life. Questions you have sent us about a variety of issues from politics to social life to biblical principles, you name it. And so we have turned over your inquiries to a panel of local ministers to research the answers and they are joining us here today for a full discussion and I want you to meet them today. We have first Pastor Chris Langstaff of Bell Center Church of Christ filling in for Greg Fox. Next, we have Pastor Chris Ewing of the County Line Church of the Brethren, located on the corner of Sandusky and Hardin Roads in Allen County. And then there's Pastor Ben Neff, Youth and Young Families Pastor at Mount Tabor Church of God, located outside of Salina. Ben is filling in for Darwin Dunton. And finally, rounding up our panel today, Pastor John Maynard, Family of Faith United Methodist in Lima, and Liberty Chapel United Methodist on Sandusky Road. You gentlemen are quite busy, but we're happy to have you with us today. Thank you for joining us. Nice to be here. Now, as we begin, I think one of the issues that's uh, buzzing about town, uh, all the nation as a matter of fact, is the fact that of course the, the U.S. Supreme Court uh, overturned uh, Roe versus Wade. And it seems since then um, that uh, this is a new opportunity. One of our, one of our uh, writers, um, or rather our uh, readers, uh, listeners, um, tuned in saying that they wanted this question answered, that this provides new opportunities for those in favor of abortion to lash out with extreme anger. Now, this is their opinion. How can we as Christians who are now being targeted for being pro-life respond to this showing Christ's love? So there's a lot of uproar about this. What, what do you think about it? Well, let's you know, start with our rookie pastor. Yeah, first well, time on the program well, down today. in Salina, we actually had quite an event going on where when they were very pro-life community down there. And so they had an event on the courthouse and there were a couple hundred people there celebrating it. But you had about 20 people lined up on the steps right below and they were just hollering and screaming. We cannot repeat what was said. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. On there, I mean, you know, I could say things like men need to have vasectomies, screaming at top, you know, like the lung type stuff. You know, that's some of the things I can say, you know, largely, but most of the stuff I can't say. Um, and so you're like, what do you do with that? So we really had to wrestle with how do you engage these people? And the first thing I would say is pray for our enemies, you know, mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. we have to be praying for these people. But do we remain silent? Because like lo the most loving thing we can do is share the truth for people. Um, yeah, that's that's one of the things you think of. if we hold the, the keys to the kingdom, so to speak, then we're the ones who need to be speaking up. Absolutely. And if they're loud and they react wrongly to it, it doesn't mean that we then are to shrink back because they were loud. We have to most lovingly and speak up with great compassion, continue to share, you know, in spite of what might happen to us and so forth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How about it? But should we should we retreat to the closet? Oh no, it? no. Um, I don't think you get in a shouting match with them either, though, because mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know no. um, things will not turn out well. The one thing that I really challenged our congregation with was, um, you know, w one we, it's a great thing that Roe was um, overturned, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, now, abortion isn't a gone. We know that it just goes back to the states, and I tried to really communicate that because I think we need to really not worry so much about this group of people that are yelling loud. Yes, we need to be praying for them and, and sharing Jesus when God gives us the opportunity, but really the ones that are in need because of these things what is, is the you know, women that are pregnant that would have sought an abortion, and then now what's the church going to do to help minister to those? Mm -hmm. So how do you combat the yelling and the arguments and stuff? By actually serving those in need and actually doing what Jesus would have done and proving them wrong. You know, um, we don't want to just sit there and say, yes, this was overturned, and then sit back in our pew and, you know, just sit there and whatever. We need to be out there engaging with the people, ministering to those women um, that would have sought abortions, um, ministering to the kids because, you know, there is going to be an influx of, um, you know, births because of these. So how can we help them and show Jesus more to them? And that's going to shut up the yellers because when, when truth comes out and what the church is doing to help these people, then what they are yelling no longer matters because it's just lies and it's being proven false. What can we do to convey to the other side 
that when they talk about a woman having the right uh, say so over her own body, that there is in fact another body inside that body. Right. You know, how do we get that across to them? Right. Well, I, there are numerous passages, uh, in, in, especially in Psalms, that, that speak to the truth that, uh, that God is the one that knit us together mm -hmm. in the womb. He, he knows, knows us, right. He, he knows us from, from, I believe, and I think everybody here would probably agree with me, he knows us from the moment of, of conception. And before. Exactly, yes. right, and, and before you, that, yes. right, before exactly, you, before, you. right, exactly, yeah. yeah. So, um, I, I, listen, there are instances where, uh, for a variety of medical reasons, a, a woman may find herself in that position where she has a difficult decision to make. To use abortion strictly as a birth control method, I think, is way beyond the pale of what was ever intended. But when you start talking about rights, you, you've got to be really careful because I, I think we as humans tend to cling on to those rights. Well, they're my rights. Well, you know what? When you become a Christian, you, you forfeit all of those rights. You know, we, we don't live for ourselves anymore. And, and, and Chris, like you said, the, 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 I think the central issue in this is, is how can we reach out to the women that are in this position? You, although obviously it never applies to us as men, but yet it could mm -hmm. because somebody, everybody that, that's around this table has been impacted by somebody that has been in this decision that that is that has faced this this quandary mm -hmm. about what to do with with a, a child that uh, that came about because of of an action we've got to be able to communicate the fact that we are special as as human beings we are created in god's image and and that goes to the very fundamental core of who we are but in our society today, yeah, we're here by accident. You know, we're, we're here. Everything was all by accident. We all came into being through a series of mutations and this. When you devalue life, these mm -hmm. are the kind of things that we're left with. So, so we we need to continue to love people and preach the sanctity of life, both in early age and at the end of life. All life is precious. Well, I mean, you hit it right on the head there. All life is precious. Doesn't that baby inside that woman, shouldn't they have a right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. they, they didn't ask to come here in the first place. And you know, the first time blood was shed, of course, was when Cain uh, slew Abel. Mm -hmm. And God said, your, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Think of the 63 million babies that have been murdered in their mother's womb. I mean, mother's womb has become had become death row for millions of unborn babies. Yeah. What should be the safest place yeah. Yeah. isn't. Yeah. Right. And I, I, I think it might be because the church has been so silent. We, mm -hmm. you know, to, to kind of Agreed. to your point yeah, earlier, we, yeah. we, now is not the time to retreat. It's not the time to pick up signs and torches and, and celebrate and, and say, yeah, we won. No. No, no, no. We get get in, and that's one of the notes I made. You know, get involved at a local pregnancy center. Mm -hmm. If if mm -hmm. you're if you're a believer and and uh, and you live in an area where there's a pregnancy resource center, I'm sure if you were to call them, it's like, what can we do to help? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They would be more than willing oh, to, yeah. to take whatever help well, you can provide. I think that's good because you know. There's a few different things in Scripture that Jesus actually says that we can apply then to these situations. So, you know, yes, we need to be led by the Holy Spirit and go where where the where God tells us, but we also need to be wise in the in the conversations and the battles that we pick. You know, um, I I tried to have a conversation with a friend, um, you know, that is pro-abortion, and they just would not listen. No. I I tried to ask questions. It always came back to the same mantra of, you know, my body, my choice. That's all, and it, just asking the question, well, what about the child's body then? Well, didn't you already make the, the choice when you actually chose to sleep with somebody? You know, like, aren't, you know, having, trying to have a conversation, all these different things, it was always coming back there. And finally, I, it's, it's what Jesus said. Well, you know, you just knock the dust off your feet and you gotta walk somewhere else because mm -hmm. they are not willing to listen. Mm -hmm. And you're going to actually 
you know, run yourself into the ground trying to argue with these picketers because they're just going to be diehards on that mantra. And you need to go where there is need and where will they will listen and those kind of things. Pastor Andrew, were you going to say something? Well, you know, I, I think that we need to be on the front line of this. Mm -hmm. and, and it's like everyone has said here, you know, we, we have to take a stand, not retreat, but we have to make sure that they know this is a living person inside you. And I hate to say it, but to me, they're committing murder. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how do you get to young people to, well, before, well, you know, yeah. before they, they, they think about so getting I pregnant? A group of uh, <clears throat> um, students down to the Creation Museum this weekend, Good. and they Great have place. a new display there. It's, it's kind of a small display. You could easily walk by it, but it's called Fearfully and Wonderfully Made. Mm -hmm. And when you look, it shows from conception to birth, that child developing. And I think it even starts and it shows, you know, sperm egg, 23 chromosomes of each. You know, you mentioned about man not being part of it. Wait, I, I, every child of mine, I have four kids, 50, they're 50% me. And they were 50% me in my wife's womb, you know? And so I should have a say in that. Yes. But, but I want people, one of the most powerful things for me is realizing 23 chromosomes, yes. 23 chromosomes, sperm and egg, meat, zygote, boom. That is when life begins. That has a soul. And, yes. that, you know, and mm -hmm. it keeps going then because a human being has 46 chromosomes, right? Other chromosomes, different animals, all that. You know, I don't remember, but that's a soul right then and there. And we need mm -hmm. to realize that that is creating an image of God, you yeah. know? And the housing place for that child, God picked to be the woman. Yeah. I'm kind of thankful. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> Thank you, you know, but... But it's still, and so I do think men need to be involved. We need to be speaking up about it and they need to hear us. Yeah. You know, what is uh, the quote uh, basically about silent men doing nothing? That's when evil prevails, right? Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. for me, so often I've been accused of being politically correct as a compliment. <laughs> you know, you're politically correct. I don't want to just rock the boat. That's a baby. <laughs> yeah, that's a baby. And you're choosing to kill it. Yeah. Well, well, it might have some special needs you're still killing it. And right. it was created yeah. in the image yeah. of God. Yes. And that's society. That is the fabric of society that breaks down society. Right? And that's what's destroying our society when we say, you know, you're just cells, right? You know, yeah. and image of God and helping young people realize, wow, like when you look at that person, that's why we uh, don't mask ourselves up or whatever, you know, necessarily when you look in the eyes and you see that, that person, I can't see their face anymore. And I'm displaying mm -hmm. the image of God. Pastor Aren't you, when you decide that you're going to do away with this baby, that's a slap in the face to God. He has given, given you this gift, and here you are, you're just going to throw it away. Yeah. Well, if I may say one more thing about, you know, we, we, the special needs cases that they have, well, what, well, look, the percentage is so small, the right. special needs, rape, incest, all those. And so one thing I would say to anyone on the other side that believes in abortion, can we just agree that, you know, though all other abortions <laughs> are illegal, then like, you know, if right. you're like, because they right. go back to the point, you know, less than 1%. Less than 1%. You 90, know, over 99% yeah. are for yeah, for basically elective abortions, almost all of them are elective abortions, meaning I don't want to have this child. Yeah. And, yeah. and so, you know, it's like we can have all the debate, but are you willing to be pro-life Democrat or Republican? You say, yeah. all right, all these lives here, we're not going to electively just say this child does, isn't allowed to exist because right. it's too, too inconvenient, yeah. you know? So, yeah, I mean, it's amazing when you actually, you know, I know it's around this 60 million, whatever babies that were born is 63. So when you take those percentages, when you say 99 percent, over 99 percent of those was just because they didn't want the kid. There was nothing wrong with it. I mean, that is millions of, you know, and they always hinge that argument on, well, what about these cases? And I think that's really important if you can switch, if somebody's willing to listen. And you bring it from that point of view of saying, we are saying that there are other people that want yes. these Amen. children. Yes. And, you know, nothing wrong with them. Let's set this small fraction aside and let's agree on this. And when you, when you come to that, I mean, it's just mind boggling when you sit there and say 50, over 55 million just because somebody didn't want them. Mm -hmm. And that's a travesty. That's tragic. Yeah. Well, I, I think we'll, we'll pause right there. Uh, we've got to take a, a break, and uh, we're going to come right back in a few minutes. We do have some other good questions we want to get to, if we can get off of this. And I don't know, I'm, I'm enjoying this so much, though, because it, it needs to be said. What you're saying needs to be said. 
Maybe we'll deal with, it, deal with it a little bit more when we come back and then move into something else. Stay with us. You'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go away, there's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastors you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now, back to the discussion. All right, we are back and we're having a great spirited discussion about the recent Supreme Court decision to overthrow uh, Roe versus Wade. Now, I think that when we note the fact that, um, as I mentioned before, God told Jeremiah that he knew him before he entered the belly, before he entered the belly, he actually knew him. And he didn't wait for Jeremiah to be born, go off to seminary school, and then ordained him. He did it when he was a fetus in his mother's womb. We have a large education campaign to conduct across this country, state by state, to educate them to the truth about humanity and God's view about humanity. Don't, don't we have that to do? And, and shouldn't there be organizations cropping up, or even the ones that exist that are mobilizing, getting Christians educated so that we can educate and what's the other word, evangelize? educate and evangelize at the same time. D does that sound like some sort of a, uh, a plan that, yeah. that could There's be? There's some great organization yeah. that yeah. I know, and Mercer County Right to Life is very involved in that. There's another group called Created Equal that has people going on college campuses and engaging yeah. the culture and having those conversations, but not yelling and screaming. And yeah, just, right. But, but they're saying, I mean, we can all sit around and have a powwow about it, but we're all mm -hmm. you know, in agreement mm -hmm. of that. And but, we're all men right here. Yeah. Too, right, <laughs> right. right. Yeah. So then, you know, certainly, but to actually go and engage people where they're at, especially young people, because that's mm -hmm. where the battle is, yes. you know, yes. for the souls of our young people. And it seems to me that it's tied in, in a sense, when we understand we're creating the image of God, then we go, oh, we're, why is there evil? Oh, we're broken. Oh, we need a savior in Jesus. Like, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. that, right? And by the way, didn't uh, John leap in Elizabeth's womb? Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. another you know, example right yeah. there. You know, where the, the, the prophetic word comes through your kicks, you know? <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. And like that. So we know that God speaks through that. And of course, that's why the devil also hates mm -hmm. the, the woman. All right. And hates, God's image. Yeah, and yeah. God's image. And the least of these, you know, where, where the, the God has always went to the least of these and said, you're special to me, right? Yes. Whether they were born or unborn, you know, he's mm -hmm. like, you're special. Mm -hmm. You know, the least of David, King David was, you know, the least of his crew. Whatever it is, it's the least, you know. And right. He, well, we also need to, one place we need to start is actually in our own churches. Because yes. I guarantee if we go into our congregation that you're going to have some mixed views of, of this. And, um, because there are big, you know, a big portion of people that call themselves Christians that attend church and all this stuff that, that think that abortion should be. Mm -hmm. And even the argument of, um, the, you know, well, what about in the case of incest and rape and mm -hmm. all these different mm -hmm. things? Well, you know, a lot of Christians would say, well, that, that abortion is okay then. And so uh, churches need to begin to have these conversations within its own you know, meeting mm -hmm. and, and pastors need not to be afraid to address some of these to topics that are, you know, political. Yes, right. but they are political only because we make them political. God has already, Jesus already spoken to these things. Um, in our area here in Lima, you know, Heartbeat, I know that they just um, had some expansion stuff and we can get involved with them. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, there's people in, our, in my church that have gotten and knows more about heartbeat than I do um, that have been great so and then right to life is here too oh, um, very good uh, in Allen County um, are there any other areas that we can actually um, organizations locally that you guys are aware of okay. I mean I my uh, daughter-in-law runs a, uh, a life center in Walpoc mm. and they get out and they they walk through town uh, they anytime something's going on they make sure that they are there bringing people to, to the knowledge of, you know, you don't have to do away with this baby. Yeah. Mm -hmm. there's, there's other things. Uh, she's a Christian and she stands on it. Excellent, excellent. It's gonna take that. You know, they say, you know, saying oh, all politics is local. 
And like you said, starting in all the churches, all around the local churches, making making that effort yes. uh, is going to be so necessary. Well, and if we want to change the political atmosphere of this country, right, um, we want to bring it back to God. You don't do it in the political atmosphere. You do it mm -mm. person to person. Mm -hmm. You yes. change the heart of people, and those people then will be, yeah. you know, become those politicians or work in politics and stuff. Um, you know, I said it during the break. Um, that my desire is for the church to become or stop just having a conversation, but to actually get action behind it, to actually move and do stuff, to minister. And as we do these things, we don't want to forget that our main goal is to create Christians, to create disciples yes. of Jesus Christ, yes. not just what we call Christians in our society, but somebody that follows the teachings of Jesus Christ that is a believer that has put their salvation in him. Mm -hmm. That is the goal of the church. Mm -hmm. That is the goal for us to reach out to these, you know, mothers um, that are pregnant. The, that's our goal for these unborn children. And when they become that, they are discipled in the way so that they can live with their creator. And I, and I hope we can devise a platform that shows what God, how God makes the distinction because God lets us know that our brother and our sister are not our enemies, right. you know? So, and that breaks down on political lines. You know, just because one person on the other side of the political uh, side, the political aisle, doesn't mean that uh, they're our enemies. The enemy is the devil. That's mm, the amen. one that's doing the stealing and the killing and destroying. And we can't fight one another, even the people that are opposed to what we're saying and doing. We can't. But we need to them. understand, like, the enemy doesn't care what direction you go as long as it's not towards God. There you go. He is not calling you to him. He's calling you away from God. Yes. doesn't matter what it is. Yes. And in that, you can understand then be, to see the attacks of the enemy in your own life. And we need to get back to, you know, Jesus said, love one another the mm -hmm. way I have loved you. Mm -hmm. And we, we have... I think gotten afraid to love. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, and you know, I, I said in one message when I preached my sermons here that you, you, you can't get into heaven unless you love everybody. Amen. You, know, you got to understand that. You got to love me. You got to love you. You got to love you. You, you got to love everybody. That's, that's a part of the criteria. Yeah. And um, we've lost sight on that. And the, the politics has just overshadowed all this. I mean, my mom used to tell me, I don't like you so much right now, but I still love you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've heard that one before myself. <laughs> All right, well, let, let's turn to another subject. Here's a, another important question that came in, and let, let's see what we can do about this one. It says, um, I read this quote from a pastor in New York City. The purpose of Christianity is not, I highlight, is not about having a personal relationship with God. He says, the purpose is about the way of Jesus to join a movement of love, justice, and liberation for the oppressed. Am I missing something here? I thought that having a personal relationship with God uh, was supposed to be an important thing about the Christian faith. Well, it is. I mean, it, w wouldn't you say it's, it's both and not one or the other? Well, the, the first sentence there, uh, and I, I would say no, you're not missing anything that this pastor is. Mm -hmm. yes. The no. very first part is not about having a personal relationship with God. Well, it, I mean, if, if, that's, if, if that's your mindset, if that's what you think, then th that, that's pretty much a, a deal killer right there. I mean, how are you going to get close to God if you don't try to set up a, yeah, yeah. a relationship? Exactly. exactly. Now, yeah. but however, having said that, love, justice, and liberation for the oppressed, that's also part of it. Yeah. But, but where do we get our, you know, we, the Bible says that, that God is love. That's where we get love, by knowing God yeah. and, and seeing him at work in our life. God is a God of justice. Absolutely. He is our standard of morality and right and wrong. God is all about liberation. He's about freeing people. And if you don't have a personal relationship with God, where are you going to get what constitutes love, justice, and liberation? Mm -hmm. you're, you're going to get it from a, a political agenda. And th that you're wrong. You're wrong. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. You're, you're, oh, well, okay, let me, let me back off that a little bit. You're misguided. No, okay. they're wrong. <laughs> okay, thank you. I, I didn't, I didn't want to, yeah, I, I didn't want to be that guy. But, but, but again, though, and, and we have this tendency to, 
to follow these man-made things in mm -hmm. our church. I just got a great article, you know, what man-made teachings are creeping into your church. Love, justice, and liberation is all a key element of being a Christ follower. Sure. But you've got to, you've got to get the standard from someplace other than a, 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 a political ideology. Mm -hmm. right. You've mm -hmm. got to get that standard from the one who is the standard. Right. You, you've got to have that personal relationship as, as a bedrock. Everything else builds out from there. Yeah. What? I'm sorry. Go ahead. The, the, the devil is just waiting, waiting to jump on you when you say, well, I really don't need a relationship with God. He's going to be all over you. And I got news for you. You can, you can run to the church. You can run anywhere. But until you're ready to have that relationship, he's got a hold on you. Mm -hmm. And we need the relationship with God. And there's no in-between. That Some people no. think that, uh, well, I'm, I, I'm, just, I'm just an observer on life. I, I don't choose one way or the other. No, if you don't choose God by default, the devil has access to you. Yes. And he'll use it. He'll use it. I'd love to sit down with this pastor because... I would quote, and I don't know who it was. I didn't hear the quote, so I, I mean, I don't want to call, but does he have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? Mm -hmm. Somebody that has a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, I don't see them ever saying in this. And then, have you read the Gospels? Like, yeah. have you, like, Jesus is all about personal relationship. Yeah. He doesn't just come in there and just say, oh, you're healed, and oh, you're healed, and oh, I saved you. It's, I want to get to know you. Yeah. I, you know, I want you to be with me. I want you to come around with me. You know, he is Emmanuel, right? Yeah. And so it is all about, like, yes, part of the, our, the Christian faith is, you know, all that justice. And, but Jesus first does that for you on the personal yeah, level. Yeah. He frees you from sin. Yeah. He gives you liberty, yeah. you know, salvation, all of those things. And that's where a lot of the American churches and churches across the Western world, we've gotten into this, we have to do this justice stuff. These, these ministries are more important than Jesus himself. Mm -hmm. and, and doing good is only good. Serving Christ is the most important. And, uh, we're out of time, but quick, quick and dirty here just to make it short. It's like that story about Mary and Martha. Martha was the sister that was uh, doing, right. doing a lot for Jesus rather than mm -hmm. spending time with yes. right. Jesus. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it, it takes a good balance of both. Yeah. We've exhausted all of our time for this show. But, you know, I want to say to our audience, good news. This same fine panel that you're, you're, uh, that you're enjoying today, it's going to be back again next week. So we want you to tune in, uh, tune in again next week and be in prayer for them that we can have more of what thus saith the Lord on next week's show. Until then, I'm Bill Harris. God bless you. Thank you for being with us. Bye-bye. <laughs>